Father God, in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being who you are, your mercy, your grace, your kindness, long-suffering. Oh God, just thank you, God. Lord God, understanding that anything I have, anything any of us have, is because you allowed us to have it. Lord, we thank you for the roof over our heads, clothes on our back, food to eat. Lord God, and we pray for those right now who do not have any of that. But we give you thanks for your mercy towards us. Now, Lord, in Jesus' name, have your way. Speak. Speak, Lord. We open our hearts and our minds and our spirits for your word. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. All right, all right. I'm back again. Elder Terrence Patillo, the Truth and Love Ministry, the Truth and Love Channel, uh, with the follow-up to yesterday's video. I won't be doing them back-to-back -back like this, I'm pretty sure, but uh, I will be getting more out than once a week. That's the intention. I'll put it to you that way. Uh so we were talking about the flesh, back to basics, the flesh. And as I was thinking about it, I realized that when I was coming up and I got this information, I thought back to being in church when I was a young boy. And I think about a lot of people that are in church now and that were in church back then as I was with them. And if I thought like this, I know now that many other people thought like this. But what I thought was I was a creep because even though I'm sitting here and I'm hearing the word of God. And I'm hearing what God says about the flesh. It really, really did not dawn on me until the day that I heard it being taught that I was not abnormal or there was nothing wrong with me because the flesh would flare up and I would want things that I should not have. And I thought back about when I was sitting in churches and I was watching people and I can tell and as a matter of fact, getting out of church, I remember being with people uh, and they would be in church and they would be dancing and shouting. And then they would be preaching and all these different things. But then after the service, my experience was we got out of the church. We got out of the service and then went down to the restaurant where they had a, a, what they call a jukebox back then. And they would put money into this machine and this machine would play worldly music, as we call it back then. And these people that had just got through dancing and shouting and speaking in tongues and all those different things, they would jump on that dance floor and they would fix their clothes up so they could be loose and they would start dancing and everything. And I realized now, looking at it back then, they didn't know how to deal with the flesh because the church did not teach about the flesh. The church, the church did not teach about sin. They had music. They preached about money. They preached about, uh, things like anger and different things like that, which is being angry and then sinning from being angry that had its place. It should have been preached. But they didn't preach about the flesh. And so by not preaching about the flesh, when people went through changes with the flesh or because they didn't they didn't know that they could be delivered from the flesh. After church was over, they gave into the flesh. And then there's other there's other people that sat in church. And like I said, even even for myself at one point. I'm sitting here thinking that I'm the creep. I'm sitting here thinking that something is wrong with me because I got these desires in my flesh. 
And I back then, I don't know it's my flesh. So there are many people that sat in churches many years ago and some that sit in there now. They don't know why they can't get rid of these things that's bothering them. Well, one of the reasons why the thing is bothering them, which, well, let me rephrase it. One of the reasons why they yield to them because they're not taught against. See, let's deal with the psychological man that we are. Man, M-A-N, mankind, women, men, what have you. There has been studies to show that 87% of the thoughts that we have as human beings are negative. And if you're listening to negative conversations, some of us have bad conversations with ourselves because of our past. Some of the things that happened to us, molested, abused, misused, and all those different things. We have an issue where we think about that a lot and we feel badly about that, but we're always thinking about it. And so we want to escape. We want to escape feeling guilty. What happens is this in feeling guilt and shame. A lot of people that have been molested or started or got exposed to sex earlier, they feel guilt and shame, especially if they if it was taken from them or if they was introduced by somebody that they love and these people abuse them. So. As they grow up, they think about these things that happen. And for us as human beings, for some reason, we take the blame when we were the one that was molested. We take the blame. We feel guilty. We walk around feeling bad because we we were the one that was molested. And so as we go on with the guilt and the shame, we hide. But hiding is reinforcing our flesh because when we were molested and when we were abused, we liked it. There's part of it that we didn't like. But the flesh part did. Remember, the soul doesn't like it. The flesh loves it. Oprah Winfrey said this, and I'm not a big fan of hers, but she said this. She said that the thing that really, really messed her mind up about being molested. She said the thing that really terrified her was the fact that she liked it. That was the most honest statement I had heard concerning that. And that was many years ago when she first started. So we got guilt. We got shame, but we love what we're doing, and so we're hiding it. Because we don't want any more guilt and any more shame, but we love the feelings that we're getting. The Word of God, learning the Word of God, it being preached at your church, if you go to church, somebody talking to you about it, and you can talk to them about it, hearing about it all the time, and reading about it, And then obeying the word, that attacks the guilt, it attacks the shame, and it attacks your flesh. And many times we get angry. See, the word of God is very offensive because it attacks your flesh, and it attacks your behaviors, and it attacks your beliefs. But that's the only way to get delivered from the flesh. It's going to always be here until the day you die. And the sin that roams in your flesh will always be here until the day you die. But there is deliverance with God. There is deliverance with Christ. There's deliverance through his word. Yes, temptation will always be there. 
But he told us in his word, he said, listen, there's no temptation that overtakes you or there's no temptation that comes to you that is not common to man. But he said with the temptation, he will make a way of escape. The only place to escape from the word, I mean, from your flesh is the word. But so as I was coming forth, as a youngster, and then even getting in, and in, in eventually ending up being in Christ, and still wondering why I feel all these things, the message was brought forth, and the teaching of the flesh was brought forth, and it gave me understanding. And so I thought back to them times when I was visiting them churches, and I thought back to the time when I was going to these places, and I would see these people do things different than what they had been dancing. And praising God too, they do things different once they got out of service. And I thought about it and I said, you know what? There's so many people sitting in churches right now that don't get taught about the flesh that they're sitting there wondering, could they ever, could they ever be saved? Will they ever get away from the guilt and the shame that they feel? Will they ever get away from feeling like they're creeps, feeling like they're perverts. They're wondering about that because I got this feeling and I want to be saved and I want to be delivered. I want to I want to walk up right. I want to talk right. I want to live right. But I got this stuff that keeps coming against me and bothering me. What is it, Lord? It's the flesh, but people will not teach about it. Because many people are in, in co are in congregations doing things. And if you preach on it, some people will get mad. I know of this young lady. She said when she found out that she couldn't masturbate no more, she cried. But what I like about the fact that she cried, it just shows that she was still determined to be saved. She cried because she had to give it up. But she cried and gave it up. There's things that I'm, I had to give up and there's things that I still fight now. Not sin, but just some of my ways. Sometimes quick, quick temper or sometimes I procrastinate or whatever. Those are all still acts of the flesh. Especially if you're not moving in the direction that God is calling you to and God has required you to be in. And we'll talk about that some other time because there's a sin of commission. You committed to sin and then there's a sin of omission. You were supposed to do something and you didn't do it. But that's another for another video. But what I'm speaking about now is the people that are walking around and they especially those that are saved there's some people that are saved and they don't they have not figured out not they have not figured out why are they still attracted to certain things and why do they still feel things pulling it's because the flesh will never die until we die as long as we are alive the desires of the flesh will be there now one thing I will say, those that deny themselves of fleshly desires and fleshly activities, those things begin to wane. Those things begin to die. The scripture tells us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. In other words, to kill him. How do you kill him? You starve it. What you focus on the longest, that's what becomes the strongest. If you focus on masturbation every day, all the time, you're going to masturbate. If you focus on committing a crime, eventually you're going to commit that crime. In the natural, this is how things work. You think about it. And if you think about it long enough, you begin to feel a certain way about it. And if you feel that way about it long enough, you have to do something about it. Some people are struggling 
because they think about these things too much. That's why the scripture said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to get that out of your mind. Quit thinking about it so much. Quit dreading it so much that you can't get it. That's what we have to do to be saved. That goes for you. That goes for me. We have to fight. That's why the scripture also talks about fighting the good fight. Lay hold on eternal life. It's a battle. One scripture said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. He's not talking about with swords and spears. He's not talking about with guns and knives. But the violent, spiritually violent, you got to be spiritually violent, which means you got to fight back in your spirit. But the thing about that is when you decide to fight like that, then you get weapons. From God. We're going to talk about those weapons. Very soon. And we're going to talk about how they work. But I want you to understand how. The flesh works. Because many people. Have given their lives to God. But because preachers are afraid. To preach on the sex. People are afraid. To preach on lasciviousness. Which we'll get into. People are afraid to preach on the flesh because they might lose, as our, our, our dearly departed says, M&Ms, money and members. They don't want to preach on these things. And many of these things are going on in churches and they don't understand because they don't care. When you preach on these things, yeah, they're going to, they're going to, you know, re react. They tell me that if you throw a can or, or something to a pile of dogs, the one that gets hit, that's the one that's going to holler. They don't understand that if they preach it, yeah, the people might get angry. Some people might leave and all those different things. But then some people might get delivered. But if all you think about is money, you can't afford for people to get upset and leave. So you don't preach that. But if you care about the souls, that's why I named this channel The Truth in Love. I tell you the truth because I love you. God loves you. And he wants you to know the truth because he said in his word, if you know the truth, the truth will make, make you free. Many people are bound. And they get bound, tied up, tangled up, enslaved to the flesh by manipulation of Satan speaking into their ear and putting things in front of them that they can fall through temptation. So one of the things we have to do is fall out of love with our flesh. In other words, you need to starve it. If you starve it, if you starve any m m physical living mechanism, if you starve it, it is going to die. If you starve your flesh, don't give it everything it wants, it is going to die. I'm not talking about the cessation of life. You out of here. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the activities, the desires of the flesh. You got to kill it. You got to put it on ice. There's some things you need to stop doing. And if you stop doing it, after a while, the strength of that thing will not be as strong as it is now. It will decrease. So you have to go before God and ask God to give you the power, the strength and the courage to leave that thing alone and then let him work. And how he works is when you begin to believe and feel like you're going to die if you don't do these things, he'll come in by his power 
and by his word and give you strength to carry on without that thing. But you have to be willing to do that. You have to be willing to leave it alone. Yes, you are saved right now. But if you continue to do these things, you will no longer be saved. You can't say, I, I did this and then say, Lord, forgive me, and then do the same thing the next day and say, Lord, forgive me, and then do the same thing the next day and say, Lord, forgive me. That's only going to last. You're taking a dangerous chance because if you keep doing it, that means you're not trying to stop. I know people and I've heard people say, you know, all, everybody struggle with something. But some of these things and some of the people that say that a lot of times they're not really struggling. They say that. But they're not struggling because when you're struggling, that means you're trying to stop it. As a drug as a drug counselor, sometimes in the groups that we do, we go around and we say uh, how we are doing. You know, tell our name, tell a drug of choice, and then how we're doing. Many people, when they get to the how we're doing, they say, I'm doing fine or I'm doing good. But this one girl, she used to say this. She said, I'm struggling. And I used to tell her, thank you for that. Because some of these people that say I'm doing good, they struggling too. And then some of them that say I'm doing good, they're not struggling because they're not even fighting. They're not putting up a fight, so they can't say that they're struggling. So they told the truth. But when you are struggling, when you are striving, then you are doing what God requires you to do and you will receive help. You will receive help because God is a present help in the time of trouble. But temptation will always come. But if it's something that you're doing, masturbation or whatever it is, sex, you got that boyfriend, girl, and you're trying to live for God, but you can't let him go. Listen, if you understand what time it is today, you got to let him go. And you got to if he's if he's talking about getting married or something like that. First of all, you got to understand that you don't need to be involved with him if he doesn't believe in the God that you believe in. Second of all, you got to stop fornicating. You got to stop sleeping with this man. I don't know why they call it sleeping. I guess that's the the the, the best way to say it where, where it don't sound bad, but folks don't be sleeping. They be in there hitting. They be in there banging. You need to cut that out, girl. Man, you need to stop that. Leave that woman alone. You know you wrong. Then you talk about, Lord, forgive me. Every time you look around, you're trying to hit. When you're trying to hit, you ain't thinking about God. You only think about God after you hit. You knew you was wrong. You know you want to be saved. You just have to give that up and ask God to give you a wife. You know you want to be saved, man. Stop that. Stop doing that. Let God do for you what he wants to do for you. Listen, the Bible warns us against living a life guided by the desires of the flesh as it can lead to sin and prevent one from inheriting the kingdom of God. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it says this, the works of the flesh are... Uh, uh, it says this, I'm sorry. It gives a list of the works of the flesh. And the list are, the list goes as this, adultery. We understand that adultery is when a man is married to a woman, vice versa, and they go out and have sex with somebody else. That's adultery. Fornication. We understand that fornication is having sex with anybody if, you, if you're if you not married. If you're single, you can't have sex with nobody, including yourself. If you want to be saved, you got to give up that. Now, if you don't want to, just walk away and wait for your number to come up. Uncleanness. Uncleanness is talking about 
sexuality, but it's also talking about nastiness, filthiness, dirty, dusty, unclean, okay? Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is sex unlimited. Lasciviousness is all types of sex. Anal sex. Sex with children. Sex with animals. Which is another, another name for that is bestiality. But lasciviousness is getting down and dirty. Any kind of way. Doing anything. And only your mind can imagine those things. Only your mind can imagine some of the things that lasciviousness is. It, it, when we talk about lasciviousness, you think about it. The nastiest thing you've done or the nastiest thing you've seen, that's part of lasciviousness. I heard a Muslim guy one time giving a demonstration and he said that, and he was talking about chitterling, chitterlings, but he was saying that if you saw somebody defecate on a plate and then go wash it and then bring it back with food on it, you know it's the same plate. You can watch him, you can watch him wash the plate and you can see them put the food on there and bring the food to serve it to you. He said nine times out of ten, you knowing that somebody's feces, somebody's bowel movements was on that plate before they washed it to bring it to you for you to eat off of. You probably wouldn't eat it. You probably would not eat it. I'm sorry, somebody's trying to call me. But people are doing something real similar to that these days. Lasciviousness. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, variance, always arguing, always trying to be in a, a beef with somebody, emulation, seeing a person and always trying to emulate them and be like them, not be yourself, but be like them because you're jealous. That's sin. That's flesh. Wrath. Wrath is anger unleashed. Strife. Always striving to be in arguments and, and, and commit uh, different acts that will cause people to fight each other or you fight them. You're in strife, seditions, trying to get people to come against the government. We've seen that. Listen, we are to obey those that have the rule over us as far as authority is concerned. God said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, and then render unto God what is God. He also said that he put the, he allowed these powerful people like the law to be in position that we might have some type of peace. Now it's going crazy, and uh, God is going to judge that. But there are laws that keep us safe if we obey those laws, and God allowed those laws to be there. To give us a, a little bit of safety. It's getting worse and worse right now. Envians. You hate. You, you can't stand to see somebody else have something. You can't stand. You, you, you feel uncomfortable. And you feel irritated. When other people have something. Or they're doing very well in their lives. Murders. We already know what murder. We already know what murders are. What, what murders mean. Heresies, heresies is, is, is saying things that's blasphemous and, and talking against the church and talking against the doctrine and talking against what I'm preaching today. Those are heresies, that the things that people say about it. Revelings, revelings are parties where people are getting drunk and dancing and, and having what they call a good time. That's flesh. And it says, and such like. But then it goes on and talks about in Romans 8, 13, it said, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, ye shall live. Galatians 5, 
16, 5, 17 says, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you have to fight this thing because this thing will take you out. This flesh will cause you to go to hell just for a good feeling, just for something, you know, to 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 satisfy, which we're never satisfied. The eyes of a man is never never satisfied and his flesh will never be satisfied. But what we have to do is fight. What we have to do is give it over to God. If you're saved, stop doing these things and let God give you power. If you stop, if the scripture said, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. If you lay it aside, I said it yesterday, God will pick that, pick it up and move, remove it. Certain things. But those things that he don't remove, those things that he does not remove in our flesh. He'll give you power to overcome. Them. You got to believe it, though. Now. One of the things that you must do if you are a saint and you are striving to be right, you have to become a person who has structure, a person who have goals, and a person who have standards. Now, what I'm talking about is this. When you put things in place to help you you can use those things and they will show you when you are not doing what you're supposed to do like for instance one of my standards is you cannot get in my car and you smoke cigarettes I don't care who you are if it's my mother my grandmother nobody can get in my car and smoke cigarettes. My boss, he's getting ready to give me a job where I'm going to be making six figures a year. You can't smoke in my car. Now, that's my standard. Now, if I let somebody get in there and I feel like they're so important or I feel like they, you know, whoever they might be, if I let them smoke, then I've compromised. And once I realize I'm compromising, I might as well smoke too. But I don't want to smoke because I don't want to offend God and I don't want to catch cancer or any other of the things that can happen if you smoke cigarettes. So therefore, I got a standard. You can't sit in my car. You got to have rules and standards for yourself. I don't I can talk to people who are not confessing to be Christians or say. And I can have a conversation with them because Jesus, he said, was sinners that time. But if they go to talking up under women's dresses and, and start cursing and all that type of stuff, the standard that I have is I leave. I walk away. Hey, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm done. That's the standard. You got to figure out what your standard is. The things that you is less is like in the drug culture. They say that in order to keep from doing drugs. And being tempted, being tempted by drugs and triggered by certain activities, you got to be aware of people, places, and things. Places you used to go, you can't go no more. People you used to be around, you can't be around anymore. Things they used to do, you can't do them anymore. Why? These are your standards now. Also, when it comes to being having structure. You need to have a time when you can pray. Hopefully, if you live by yourself, you can pray like you want to pray. But if you live with somebody, you got to respect them. So you got to be able to pray at a time where you don't disturb them. And you don't really have to. That part of it is not that hard because you can put your face in your pillow or you don't have to scream and holler to pray. You can speak to God. He said that men should always pray. And if men should always pray, that means he's not going to be in a church where he can be loud. He's going to be in a corner sometimes. He's going to be in his closet sometimes. But the bottom line is having a structured situation where you can pray. 
because praying will help you. Then you got to learn about fasting, denying yourself of food. You got to pick some time out of the week, hopefully each month to deny yourself certain foods or deny yourself food, period. Let me tell you something. And I got to be quick because I'm almost done. Listen, if you want a powerful life in God, start fasting and praying, especially if you're single. If you're single, man, you could be a mighty young person of God. Fasting and praying and studying the word of God. But you have to have these things set up. And you have to get into a routine. So if you don't pray, I listen, I used to fast so much that when I didn't fast, I was like, something ain't right. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I'm not fasting. Fasting and prayer will help you be strong, will help you be powerful. And so no one can tell you how to structure this. But you got to find time to pray. You got to find time to study. You got to find time to read. You got to fi find time to read other books or other supplemental books for, for reading scripture. You need time to read other types of books that's not scriptural, not books that's against the scripture, but you need to broaden your understanding. You need to keep a dictionary with you at all times. But you have to set up times you have to set up something where it becomes a routine it's just like a lot of people i told somebody one day i want to be like some of those guys who are into working out and they work out so much that now they've gotten to a point that if they don't work out they feel bad they feel strange they don't feel good I've heard people say, man, I need to work out because I don't feel good. You need to do that. You need to set up a routine for reading, studying, fasting, and praying. Set it up the way you want to set it up. But set the time up where you can do these things freely. And you will be a powerful person in God. But one thing I want to tell you. Read this book as much as possible and pray as much as possible. Set it up how you want to. Some people pray at night or, or early in the morning after 12, 1 o'clock at night. And some people get up at 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning to pray. But having said that, study these things that I'm telling you and God will bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for today's message. I hope it hits home. Lord, let it hit home. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. I'm out.